Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Listen. I am going to give the followers a few more minutes. Listen. Don't try to talk about Coach T hair, okay? It's it's real rough up underneath these braids, okay? It's real rough. And I am past due for a new do. But it's just so convenient. It's really convenient. Listen, how is everyone doing this evening? How is everyone doing? I'm not going to wait too long because I don't want to take up too much of your time if you were unable to catch this live, you can always go back and watch the replay. I want to share with you tonight something I feel the Lord um, gave me in my uh, devotion time today. My devotion time today. And um, it's great because... I have a question that kind of ties in with it. And so I'm going to kind of combine the two and put it in together <clears throat> based off of the question and then based off of what I um, received during my devotion time this morning. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Listen, I get hot, cold, hot, cold, but I do not. Okay, I get hot cold because sometimes the heater it be like real real hot, and then it'll shut off, and then all of a sudden it get cold again, and then so that's where my hot cold come from. Don't get it, don't get it messed up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start. Hello, my name is Coach T. I am a marriage and life coach slash wedding officiant, but on this page I am his wife coach. And so I want to jump right into the question that was um, given to me for this week. Every Thursday, I come on live for about 15, 20 minutes, no more than 30 minutes um, to do uh, a Q&A. Any questions and um, that, you know, a wife may have, even a husband can come on and ask. Anyone can ask a question. Um, most of the time I get questions from wives or, you know, um, single ladies who are interested in the marital covenant. Um, but anyone can come on and ask a question that you may have about marriage. My area is marital restoration. So I get a lot of questions about um, marriage and spouses and things of that nature, relationships. And so I want to um, share this question from um, a young lady and the question is what happens what happens when God sends your spouse back home for a short period of time and then that spouse leaves again do I now have the opportunity to exit out of my marital covenant or do I wait on God's next instructions do I follow what the Bible verse tells me in 1 Corinthians 7.15, which that Bible verse simply says, if a unbelieving spouse decides to leave, let them go. You are not under any um, obligation. Um, God has called you to um, freedom. And so if that unbelieving spouse makes a decision to leave, you let them go. All right. God has called you to peace. Or... Um, okay, yeah, so that was that was the Bible verse. So then she said, but something on the inside of me won't allow me to walk away. Something on the inside of me won't allow me to walk away. Why? 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 All right. So I want to kind of like dive into that a little bit and talk about that a little bit. And then I'm going to share three points with you for the note takers, for the ones who like to take notes. Again, I never come on here by myself. I always come in with God's truth. I always come in with God's word. I don't do my sessions like that. I don't do my lives like that. Um, I go based off of what I have experienced myself as a wife, as a coach, um, my experience with client, different clients. And I go 
off of God's word. And so I have to share God's truth with you. All right. And so what happens when your spouse comes back home and God, you know, allow your spouse to come back home and they come home for a short period of time and they leave again. First thing first, we have no control over another person's will. Point blank period. We have no control over um, another person's will. Why they made a decision to um, um, come home and leave, I don't know. I don't know. One of the things I will encourage you um, is if you do have a spouse that, you know, um, does that or whatever, I always ask wives, you know, to don't necessarily look on the outside, but take a, um, a, a look on the inside. Take a look at yourself. What did you do or what do you think you could have, you know, done differently? Or is there anything that you have contributed to that person leaving? Like go down a list, like make a checklist, make a checklist. You know, was there anything that you may have did or said that may have contributed to this person's exit? And write that down, write that down, write those things down. Go through that list, examine your heart, go through that stage. All right. You don't find nothing there. Cool. 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 Go to the next thing. The next thing is, again, we don't have no control over a person's will. We don't have no control over a person's will. And maybe that person was not, one, ready um, to um, come back and deal with the, the, the responsibility of being a spouse. Maybe, two, that person um, still got some um, deliverance that they need to deal with. And they haven't really came to a place of full surrender and repentance. Okay. A lot of times, uh, spouses come back home on, um, what they call either they was forced to come back home. Um, maybe they got ill. Um, maybe, um, you know, um, something happened for them to come back home. Maybe God, um, gave them a revelation for them to come back home and now they're back home and it's like, okay, I don't want to do this or whatever. We don't know what a person is dealing with. Depends on how long they was gone, how long they was out there, what they was doing, who they were, who they were in company with. But the biggest part of that, if that person have not come to a place of complete surrenderance in their will and ready, willing and ready to move on as a, um, as a spouse, that, I mean, it's a possibility that they can leave again. It's a possibility they can leave it again. And the thing you want to make sure is you are in right standing with God. You want to make sure that you are in right standing with God. You want to make sure that your all your I's are dotted, all your T's are crossed, making sure that you're doing, that you did the right thing, okay? Then the question goes to, well, do I, is this an opportunity for me to leave? Do I have um, that that Bible right to leave based off of what that word is or whatever? Um, in 1 Corinthians 7, 7, 15, can I leave the marital covenant? I, and this is just me as a, wife and this is just me as a coach um one of the things i have learned and me just as a person one of the things i have learned over the years is don't jump the gun right away even if this is something like you know what you're gonna do you already got your mindset you know that you know that you know that you're not gonna do a certain thing give yourself time give yourself time um just like if it was something like a car or you know you want to go purchase a car you want to go purchase a home you want to you know you're going to make an investment in something give yourself at least 24 to 48 hours before you make any type of big decision like that what i do and what i tell my clients is i encourage them to fast i always give people the 30-day rule do a 30-day fast Give yourself 30 days. Give yourself give yourself 30 days to hear from God. Give yourself 30 days to settle all those different emotions. Give yourself 30 days to calm yourself down. Give yourself 30 days to make sure and get you know complete clarity on what it is that you should be doing next. Give yourself 30 days to, you know, uh, and allow God the opportunity to to speak something to you. Give yourself 30 days days if your spouse comes home they make a decision i want to leave i'm going i'm out of here this now whatever don't be so quick to say okay that's it i've been putting up with this long enough i've been doing this for a long period of time i've been going backwards and forth with this i don't want to do this no more i'm done you have drawn the line with me you have tried it for the last time i'm not gonna do this give yourself 
30 days. Give yourself some time to make sure you hear from God. And so that would be one of uh, that would be another thing that I would recommend. All right. Give yourself some time. That feeling that you are having on the inside, because that's what she said, but something on the inside of me won't allow me to walk away. That feeling that you have it on the inside is normally an indicator that you might need to seek godly wisdom. That feeling on the inside, you're like, mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. When God does something, he's solid in it. It's a solid. It's no confusion. You're not like up, down, up, down. It's not like, okay, you know, maybe this, maybe that. When God has you doing something and he wants you to do something, God is very plain. God is very clear. God will send uh, clarity. He will give you the words. He will give you full understanding of what it is that you're supposed to do. If you are in a place where you're like, mm, I don't know, maybe I'm still looking confused that all those signs right there furthermore lets me know that you need to do a 30 day fast a 30 day fast even if you don't have that and like i said you set you set on your decision of what you're going to make give yourself a 30 day fast so you can um flesh out those different emotions and flesh out all those different thoughts and stuff you know we are human beings we kind of up down up down up down you know and so give yourself some time don't be so quick to jump into something you never know god can change things and the reason why i always uh say the 30 days as well is because i know and i remember just i always go back to myself in my own marital covenant <clears throat> god um help me in 30 days it's like in 30 days i seen when i took a when i did a fast concerning my my marital covenant when me and my husband was separated i seen god i seen god do some things in me i see some god do some things in him and so give yourself time don't just jump the gun give yourself some some time so that will be my answer to that person do your you know cross examination and make sure that you haven't did anything to contribute to that person's um to, to that person leaving um make sure that you are in communion with God you know give yourself that that 30 day um time frame is to make sure you know Everything you got, all your ducks and everything is in, is in order. Those would be the two things that I would recommend you do um, starting out in that. All right. Now, listen, listen, listen. I know when we talk about marriage, it seems like, oh, my God, every time it's like it's always something like marriage is supposed to be. Oh, I don't even want to do this. I'm being so discouraged about this whole marriage thing. Like every time I hear somebody talk about this thing in the marriage and this thing in the marriage and this thing in the marriage, it's like I don't even want to do this marriage. Listen, people, marriage is not supposed to always be a bad thing. Okay, but we have to go back to the beginning of the book and way back in Genesis when the curse, when the curse was placed on marriage, a curse was placed on marriage. Now, I didn't look that one up, <clears throat> but if you go back to the book of Genesis, when um, Adam and Eve had sin and the Lord was basically telling, you know, the guy, you know, you're going to work hard. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. He was telling the woman and, you know, you're going to bear labor pains and, you know, you're going to go through, you know, hard uh, days when, you know, when come down to, you know, I'm um, having a child. We, um, a curse, um, a curse was placed on the marital covenant at that time. A curse was placed on the marital covenant. So I say that to say you will go through a season in your marital covenant of suffering. You will go through a season in your marital covenant of suffering. How long that season may last that part is totally up to you how long that season lasts is totally totally up to you you get to decide how long that season lasts if you get it quick if you get god's revelations if you get you know you hear from god if you are you know humbling yourself if you are you know in god's presence you get to determine how long those seasons last the up down seesaw thing is not supposed to be a permanent thing in the marital covenant but i always tell couples i always tell wives i always tell individuals there is a price there
there is a price for a happy ever after marriage. There is a price to pay uh, for that that longevity marriage. There is a price for, um, you know, that, oh my God, we've been together for 50 years and, you know, we did this, we do this, we do this now. There's a price for that. You don't just walk into, oh, this is it. Da, 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 da. No, there was a curse placed on the marital covenant in the beginning, in the beginning, back in the book of Genesis. And so you will have a season in your marital covenant of hardship. You will have a season of hardship in your marital covenant. This is why it's so important for um, couples to understand. And this is why I push, again, I push premarital um, in this area. This is why I push couples in the marital, uh, in the premarital stages um, about making sure they, they are in a relationship with Christ. Because if you are in a relationship with Christ, it seems a little bit easier for you to um, be able to, you know, transition from those different stages, you know, <coughs> you'll be able to kind of like transition um, from different from different stages versus staying in that one spot. A lot of times couples get stuck because they are not mature enough, because they are selfish, because they have... Um, no wisdom or knowledge or understanding about what the marital covenant is all about. And this is why it is so, so important for couples, um, dating couples to date on purpose, to have a plan, to know what they next move is. Don't just marry somebody just because, oh, we've been together for 10 years. We should get married now. Oh, we have two children together. We should get married now. No, get a full understanding of what the marital covenant is before saying, before saying I do. Because you will go through a season of hardship. You will go through a season of hardship. And so one of the things I like to encourage, um, especially my especially my wives, when they're dealing with the whole marital restoration, they spouses, you know, not there or these spouses are there and may maybe they have left or, you know, maybe some type of, you know, wound has taken place in the in the marital covenant. They're dealing with something, they're dealing with some, you know, some type of trauma in they in their marriage. One of the things um I like to encourage wives to um to 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 think about um you have to understand that marriage is not just you and him it is about you and him, but it's more to that. It's more to that. It's a bigger picture. And sometimes when we go into our suffering, you have to consider those other things. You have to consider those other things. And so what the Lord dropped in my spirit today was the enemy attack is not just on marriages. The enemy attack is on the families and generations to come. It's not just the marriages that are being attacked. It's the family and the generation. It's the bloodline that the enemy is after. And if he can get that immature spouse, and if he can get that spouse who is not um, ready to um, make that decision to, you know, you know, I'm going to suffer through this. Or I'm going to, you know, push through and make things, you know, work um, in my marital covenant. If he can get you to turn from your marital covenant um, and, and walk away from it without considering the other things, the other people, the surroundings, the people that you are, um, that's that's watching you, the people that is is looking to you, your children, your family members, uh, people that you work with, <coughs> excuse me, people that you work with, people that you come in contact with. If he can get you to take your eyes off of those things, then he can get you to walk away and leave your marital covenant. And so, I just want to encourage spouses on this evening, wives, husbands, um, ones that's preparing for marriage, I want to encourage you um, to, it's not just about me and my boo. This is about your future family. If you don't have a family already, this is about your future family. And this is about generations to come. Your children's children, children's children, children's children. When you make a decision to say, I do, and you come into the marital covenant, you are not just making a decision to come into the marital covenant like, okay, I'm getting married and that's it. You are coming to go to war. You are coming to make a stand. You are coming not with your little, oh, this is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be. You are coming in. You have to understand that you are coming into a war when you make a decision to say, I do. 
And so three things I heard God say um, to me this morning when when he gave me that message. The enemy attack is not just on the marriages. It is on the family and generations to follow. All right. And the three things I heard God say, he said, hear what I am saying to you in your reality state. And a lot of times people do not like to deal with their reality. But let's say, for example, my reality is, okay. My spouse has made a decision to come home. Now, all of a sudden, he's made a decision to leave. That is my reality. What am I supposed to do about that? Okay? And God is saying, deal with the reality. You know, deal with the reality. Face the challenge head on and pray for my strength. Deal with the reality. Face the reality. A lot of times, people try to tiptoe around the reality and what's really going on and what's really happening. And God is saying, I need you to deal with that. I need you to deal with that. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. I want to encourage spouses to deal with their reality, whatever that hard thing is in your marital covenant that you are going through, that you are dealing with, deal with it, deal with it, face it, face the challenge. Don't run from it. Don't, don't, um, you know, don't, don't, don't bow down to it. Deal with it. Face it head on. All right. God also said to me, you have to be okay with benefiting from your, with God, you have to be okay without benefiting from your marriage in a season. You have to be okay without benefiting in your marriage for a season. There are seasons that you have to stand on the promises of God and not the plans of your ideal marriage or the plans of your spouse. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to say that again. There are times when you have to stand Stand on the promises of God and not on the plans of your idea, marriage, or the plans of your spouse. There are some times when you know what? I don't know what's going on, God. I don't know which way to go. I don't know how to handle this. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. But guess what? Your word reminds me. And I love, love, love. This is my favorite Bible verse, um, Matthew 19 and 6, which it says, They are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. That is a promise verse for the marital couple. That is a promise verse for the family. No matter what comes up, what comes up, what goes, what happens, this and that, God is for your marital covenant. And so you have to know how to get back into God's word concerning what he said and the promises that he made to you concerning your marriage. Do not let this world, the culture's way, the way somebody else marriage is, is, is running, uh, turn you from your marital covenant or the way somebody else marriage is not working. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, this person got divorced and they live in their best life. But was that what God said to you? Did God give you the okay to go live your best life? Okay. All right. This person over here, they, you know, they, they cheat on their spouse all the time and it seems to be okay. So you think, okay, but every person will have to bow down and, 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 and repent. Uh, every person, they should repent. But every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They will be held accountable for that part. They will be held accountable for that part. Okay. And so it brings me to the next part, which um, God said, do not think. And this is what I think a lot of times, especially for my wives, especially for my wives. A lot of times I feel like the wives kind of go, they, they kind of, you know, go left. They kind of like think like, okay, I'm the only one suffering in this. He seems to be living his best life. He not worrying about nothing. And it could go for a man as well. But I've just had some experience with a lot of with a lot of wives who, who who had this complaint, you know, where it seems like, you know, they the only one going through something hard. Their husbands is living this happy ever after life and they're, you know, they're not dealing with anything. But God word, um, God said to me, God would deal with the spouse concerning the sin in the marital covenant. Do not think that your spouse is just going to go through life 
continuing doing what they're doing and God is not going to deal with them about their sin. Best believe God has probably already sent a messenger to talk to them. He's already probably rallied up his angels to send certain ones to already start to talk to, you know, to start to speak to your spouse about their sinful behavior. Whether or not your, your spouse listen or not. That's not, that's not, that's not for you to worry about, but you have to understand that God is going to deal with that spouse. God is going to deal with that spouse, uh, sin in the marital covenant, whether it's adultery, whether it's abuse, whatever it is that's taking place in the marital covenant, God will deal with that spouse. So don't think that God is not going to deal with that. All right. First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine and 10 says, Oh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swanders will inherit the kingdom of God. I probably should have did a different one because um, I probably messed all those words up. But it's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. And basically the Lord is saying, do not think these people will not go unpunished from their thing. It is, we have to, have to, have to repent of our sins, of our wrongdoings. It's a must. It's a must. And so what I would encourage you to do in a season like that, in a situation like that, what I would encourage you to do is what Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8 says, which says, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. I want to encourage you spouses. I want to encourage you wives to not stop praying for your marital covenant. Does it matter what it looks like? Does it matter what it seems like? Does it matter what the enemy thinks that he's trying to do or what he thinks he's getting over with? It does not matter. Do not leave your pulse, okay? Do not leave your pulse. And as a wife, as a spouse, it is up your job to continue to pray for that unsubmissive spouse, that unsubmissive husband, even husbands, pray for your unsubmissive wife. That is your position as a spouse. That is your position as a spouse. All right. And so I want to encourage you, no, we're not supposed to suffer in our marriage always, not forever, but we do have to understand that there was a curse placed on the marital covenant way back in the book of Genesis. And in order for us to get the results we want in our marital covenant, we have to be willing to do the necessary work. We have to be willing to stand. We have to be willing to not benefit for a season. We have to be willing to suffer for a season. We have to be willing to um, get knowledge, get wisdom, get understanding. We have to be able to uh, seek wise counsel. Um, we have to be able to deal with whatever the reality is of our marital covenant at that time. Face it. Do not bow down to it. Face it so you can overcome it and move on. All right? So, I do hope that has been a blessing to you. Listen, if you are interested in any of Bonyancy services, you may reach me by my website at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com or you may visit me on my Google page, my business page. There you will see the services that I offer at Bonyancy Premarital and Marital Life Coaching. LLC. I hope this has been a blessing for you. I will see you next week. Blessings.